Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, let me start with Ms. Schulp. Um, Mr. Shankman uh, indicated his opinion that I think he said every cryptocurrency or virtually every one easily meets the Howey test for the definition of security. The Howey test includes the investment of money in a common enterprise with the expectation of profit through the efforts of others. So in Bitcoin, we have no corporation that controls it or issued it. We have no individual. We have no committee. Um, it seems to me purely decentralized. Isn't it hard to establish that there's a common enterprise when there is no central authority that controls and operates it? Uh, I, I agree. I, I don't think for Bitcoin you can meet the elements of the Howey test oh. in multiple respects. Right. So, and it, it, would you say as a general matter, a truly decentralized protocol, it's pretty hard to establish the common enterprise? I, I completely agree. The securities laws were evolved in no small part in order to deal with questions of information asymmetry right. coming from managerial bodies that are doing that. Right. Where's, where is that asymmetry? Look, I think there's a case to be made that there should be a regulatory regime on disclosure requirements for an issuer, that there should be a regulatory regime for secondary market trading. But I think we ought to make it specific to this sector because to try to shoehorn it into decades old legislation that deals with different instruments, I think is very problematic. Um, Mr. O'Leary, it seems to me that tokens are very often the tool or mechanism to incentivize people to validate and maintain a distributed ledger. Now, you can gamble with them. You can speculate as to what a given token is going to be worth. But it seems to me that underlying blockchain technology is potentially extremely powerful. It's actually already being used in a variety of ways. Could you address this notion that the only possible use is a zero-sum gambling enterprise? No, I don't agree with that at all. It's preposterous to say that the potential of blockchain technology in authenticating physical assets and contracts and tokens, as you suggest, is incredibly powerful. In fact, I think what's going to happen as we peel the onion on FTX over the next year or two is the shining outcome of the success of the blockchain to track these assets will become the focus of everybody. We will realize Every security or token that left FTX, left Alameda, got traded between shareholders, all tracked irrefutably on the blockchain. The power of this technology is very harnessable, very powerful, and of course, we should lead the world in it because so much of it is developed here. The hottest hands coming out of, MI out of MIT right now, where do they want to work? A third of the class. They want to work on the blockchain. You can't take that much potential and not expect extraordinary outcomes. This is a remarkable technology. Yes, it requires regulation, but if you just ask where the hot hands are going, the great engineers, this is where they're going. So, we uh, train them here, and then we kick them out of the country so they do their work somewhere else. So let, let me ask you directly. You were an investor in FTX, and I know you've spoken frequently with Sam Bankman-Fried over, over an extended period of time. Why do you believe FTX failed? I have an opinion. I don't have the records. Here it is. After my accounts were stripped of all of their assets and all of the accounting and trade information, I couldn't get answers from any of the executives in the firm, so I simply called Sam Bankman-Fried and said, where is the money, Sam? He said he had been refused access to the servers. He no longer knew. I said, okay, let's step back. This is a simple case in my mind of where did the money go? And I said, Sam, walk me back 24 months. Tell me the use of proceeds of the assets of your company. Where did you spend it? And then he told me about a transaction that occurred over the last 24 months, the repurchase of his shares from Binance, his competitor. I didn't know this at the time, but at some point, CZ or Binance, who runs Binance, purchased 20% ownership in Sam Bankman-Fried's firm for seed stock. And then, over time, and I asked him, what would compel you to spend $2 billion, was the number he was giving me at that time. Later, in a subsequent conversation, about 24 hours later, he told me it could have been as much as $3 billion to buy back the shares from CZ. I asked him, what would compel you to do that? Why wouldn't you keep your assets on your balance sheet? And why would you offer this to just one shareholder? He said, because every time we went 
to get licensed in different jurisdictions, because you must understand the prize of crypto is to get regulated. For all the talk we say about Bitcoin and everything else, no institutions own this. I work for the Sovereign Wealth and Pension Plans. They don't touch this stuff because it's unregulated. Between these two, let's call them frenemies, because they obviously were the two, potentially the two largest shareholders in the firm, they had a disagreement. They had a falling apart. Apparently, according to Sam Bankman-Fried, CZ would not comply with the regulator's request in these different geographies, these different jurisdictions, to provide the data that would clear them for a license. He withheld it, according to Sam Bankman-Fried. The only option the management and Sam Bankman-Fried had was to buy him out at an extraordinary valuation of close to $32 billion, less apparently a 15% discount. That stripped the balance sheet of assets. You ask me why it went bankrupt? Go to the last week. All of a sudden, in social media, CZ is asking for another $500 million. He wants to do a block trade of FTT, or, or, the, or, the, or the, uh, the proprietary token of FTX. He wants it converted back to fiat. Why would you put that out there you know it's going to push down the pressure. It's going to put, push down the value of that coin dramatically, and that's exactly what happened. Every trader knows if you have a large block trade, you go negotiate a clearing price with other buyers, and you do the transaction. In my view, my personal opinion, these two behemoths that own the unregulated market together and grew these incredible businesses in terms of growth were at war with each other and one put the other out of business intentionally. Now, maybe there's nothing wrong with that, maybe there's nothing wrong with love and war, but Binance is a massive, unregulated, global monopoly now. They put FTX out of business. Now, lots of other reasons, I'm sure, but that's my personal opinion. That is what Sam Bankman-Fried told me in terms of where the assets went. Why should we care? Single reason. I'm a shareholder. You tell me the two largest shareholders do a transaction together, that's a related party transaction. I'm not sure that's okay. Maybe I want a Madoff clawback on those proceeds. Maybe I want to pursue Mr. that. Mr. O'Leary, I'm, I'm sorry, you're about three minutes over. You have a monthly follow-up, sir, to me. Um, I had another topic, so if we do a second round, I'll, okay. I'll take Thank it up you. then. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chairman. Senator Reid of Rhode Island. 